So, um, first, of course, it's a privilege to have you with us. Uh, what Hello, are your everybody. Hello. Yeah. Hi. What are your first thoughts after seeing this energetic dance and the women performing it? Put it on the 26th January this time. Yeah, I think so. That's a great idea. Women power. Yeah. Of the yesteryears, we've forgotten. And sort of revived now. Great. Uh, Ms. Bedi, I think, uh, you know, you've been a national level sports person. You've been, of course, everyone knows the first woman IPS officer. Uh, you've served Puducherry. Uh, so many firsts in your career, but also a lot of difficulties that you faced and a lot of challenges which people tend to forget. Uh, you were always sort of consigned to departments where I think the seniors, usually men, thought you would not succeed. Uh, what were your thoughts during those moments and how did you turn them around uh, and, and make them work for you? I think without them I wouldn't have been what I am today. I'm so glad that I was challenged so many times that I actually, actually came into myself because I truly, that's a fact that my sports helped me a lot. I was not only a national champion, I was a nation tennis champion yes, when sorry. I joined the Indian yes. police service. So what I'm saying is I think that really helped me. So I was a champion at heart. I loved, I loved a fight, I loved a challenge. But it was always a fight for justice, yeah. fight for the righteousness. Right. And uh, I think that essential quality that sport instills in, in a person, uh, how important is that for women? You see our women sports persons, I mean, uh, sports, uh, uh, sports people, they, they come from the most difficult circumstances and are doing so well globally. What is the kind of impact it will have on the next generation, you think? Education is not complete without sports. Yeah. Only books don't do it. If you want really complete education, you've got to have an outdoor tra training, outdoor. So even if you don't have a sports ground, take them on the road. Right. Go cycling, go ri hiking, go trekking, but do something outdoor which challenges you. Right. I've always wanted to ask you this. It's somewhat of a personal question, but how have you managed to look the same as you were, I think, when you first began? <laughs> <laughs> You've not changed at ask all. Ask him. He also is the same looking. <laughs> He's changed a little bit. Ask him. <laughs> but I, how every time I see Prabhu, he looks the same. <laughs> but what do you do? What do you eat? What, how do you exercise? What do you think? I, I, we often get your good morning nutrition. I mean, we get it every day. But what is it that keeps you... That's a nutrition. Yeah. That's a mind nutrition. Right. I think it's all about in the mind. Right. It's about mind management. How, do you, how does your day go? How does the day go? Yeah. The way I want it. Okay. So you get up very early in the morning or... or I get up at the time I want to get up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I think that's, that's a very important quality uh, that you've also imbibed, I think, when you talk about mindful parenting now, and I've been following what you've been saying. Um, it's something that you drew from your own father, from your own parents. What was it that they instilled in you, which you have instilled in... Uh, people who have been your juniors, uh, your own family, what is, what is that quality? I think it's the upbringing. Upbringing and then your own grooming, and then you keep grooming yourself, and then you remain aware of yourself, and then you keep taking the direction towards where you want to go, not somebody else directs you. So I've been a very self-directional person. Right. But that's very difficult for a lot of women, isn't it? That external validation that they require from uh, society, from their seniors at work. I mean, we hear of, say, Cheryl, Stanberg, uh, 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 Cheryl um, Sandberg talking about leaning in. You lent in a long time ago, right? But it was, uh, it was not, there were not too many examples before you then. So what was it that was driving you then? I think the driving was never to be a part of the crowd, but to lead the crowd and show the way. I was never, ever a crowd girl. I was always leaving the crowd behind. What was the crowd at that time for me? Yeah. Weakened women. Right. Weakened women. And I didn't want to be part of that weakened women crowd. So I left it behind. And then that's how New Road was created. Right. Were there lots of things that you had to hear in those days uh, about yourself, whispers, uh, people who said uh, things that were not always palatable? How did you... Uh, one has to develop a thick skin, right? How did you develop that? By playing tennis. 
I had a thick skin. I have a very sensitive skin, but I also have a very thick skin for certain, certain people right. and certain happenings. I think that's helped. Yeah. You need to have both, both the skins, thick and thin. Right. Thin, because if you don't have a thin skin, you will not feel. And yeah. I think yeah. that's important as well. You have Absolutely. to have that empathy. Absolutely. Right. Without that, you're not a complete human being at all. And I think one of the biggest quality of women is empathy. What is it about women, you think, in this century that will make them the force for greater good? Their emotional intelligence. Because they've already, we already have, once we're educated, we got the intelligence quotient. We have educated. But what's, what is our strength inborn is emotional intelligence, which we should never weaken. On the contrary, keep strengthening it. What is the advice you give to juniors in the force, to women who come to you? There's so many women and men who admire you. Uh, what is the advice you give them about how to live a life that is both privately uh, happy and publicly useful? I would think that um, intelligence quotient, education, emotional education, all the emotions which you bond with, the compassion, the sense of giving, collaboration, loving, caring, and I think the spiritual quotient, which is lacking. We must inculcate spiritual quotient early on in life to remain humane and be happy. Uh, which is not the same as being religious, necessarily. It's other than religion. Yeah. Spiritual, spirituality is nothing but human behavior. It's humanity in within you. So I think if you are inclined towards... Gita is spiritual quotient, by the way. Reading of the Gita is spiritual quotient. It's not religion. Yeah. So therefore, I'm not looking at formed religion. I'm looking at uh, humanity within. So if you remain a human being inside, which is being listening to your inner voice or listening to your voice of conscience, where you are not growing at the cost of others, you grow by your own merit and you became a giver. So I think that's if you can inculcate, which is the third is the SQ, yeah. spiritual quotient. You've never become bitter. Uh, there have been occasions where you could have. How did you prevent yourself from it's a, becoming bitter? It's a spiritual quotient, right. which forgives, which rises above. It's so the moment you have the humanity within you, you start looking above and you look beyond, you don't look behind. Right. Are there any goals that you still have left to achieve? Uh, I can't imagine what, but are there? I'm planning my next life already. <laughs> Which is, how, how are you doing that? Uh, to totally go spiritual. Okay. I think that should be interesting to watch. Thank you so much. It's always such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Uh, I'd request you to stay on stage now because we're about to begin the award ceremony. But before that, I think, um, Lakshmi, you've uh, given her the memento, right? Sorry, uh, I've become a little old now. Uh, may I um, now begin the awards? Uh, may I request Mr. Chavla to come to the stage as well and help uh, Ms. Bedi give away the awards? And we begin with the first award of the evening, Dr. Swati Nayak for sowing seeds to combat climate change. May we have the video please. Dr. Swati Nayak. Dr. Swati Nayak, an agriculture scientist specializing in devising and adopting strategies for high-yielding and nutrition-rich crop varieties, is affiliated with the Manila-based CGIAR and the International Rice Research Institute, IRRI. She was the 2023 Borlaug Field Award recipient from the World Food Prize Foundation, Des Moines, Iowa, USA, and presently serves as the South Asia lead for seed systems at IRRI. She also holds the global leadership position for cereal crop-based seed systems within the CGIAR initiative, Seed Equal. Swati carries more than 13 years of job experience in agricultural innovation initiatives and in engaging rural women in technology scaling initiatives. Uh, Swati, a quick question. So really, how many varieties of uh, rice seeds do we have? Oh, well, you know, since 
the advent of green revolution actually i would say that till date uh, in a country like india and uh, just for one crop like rice we probably have 1500 Oof. plus varieties high yielding varieties that have been released and developed for the farmers for use and what about the traditional varieties are there as many so there are many actually and if you uh, say the accessions so they will be probably in thousands so we have our uh, you know um, black rice red rice you know different traditional rice varieties uh, which are around grown by the farmers whom we say farmers variety and we also have system to give them the rights and licensing to grow and commercialize those varieties as well so yeah our country is a rich country in terms of biodiversity and especially in case of rice germplasms, it's an unending resource for us. Which is the most nutritious? Well, I would say that a lot of traditional varieties which our farmers grow, they have, the experts have studied that they have high nutrition content. Uh, however, this, there remains a lot of opportunity to scale that, uh, to bring those things into value chain so that it makes, uh, you know, it becomes profitable for the farmers who are growing it, but, but also creating a lot of awareness among the consumers uh, that, you know, uh, this lost, you know, gem plasm or the varieties which our farmers have been growing for centuries, they do have a lot of nutrition value. Apart from that also, thanks to our agriculture research and the progress in that, a lot of new varieties which are being developed, they are being developed being more nutritious, having the high content of micronutrients like zinc, protein, iron, and all those things. So what, we, what remains however is that even though a lot of those products are existing, uh, not all information and awareness is reaching to our consumers and also like you know the seeds the quality seeds of these not being accessible to a lot of smallholder farmers so our responsibility lies there to make those accessible wonderful thank you so much thank you dr Nair. the second award uh, of the evening goes to sukanti meher for winning hearts with her tie and dye mastery may, ha may we have the video on her please Sukanti Meher, an active member of the Odisha government's Handloom and Handicrafts Development and Promotion Council, Sukanti Meher is a weaver and entrepreneur with more than 15 years of experience. Known for her training and management talents, Sukanti has managed to train over hundreds of women weavers in Odisha through programs undertaken by the central and state governments as well as the United Nations. She was felicitated with a national award by the Union Ministry of Textiles for her tie and dye Vivaha tablecloth design in 2011. She is also the recipient of varied honors bestowed by the Western Odisha Backward Class Organization, Tyaga, Borpali Press Club, Borgad Press Club, Sambalpuri Bhasha Sanskritika Parishad, and the State Bank of India. So, Kanti ji, I think you have uh, Kiran ji ke liye kuch lai hai, jo aapne khud bana hai, unko dijiye ga? Inho ne khud bana ya hai, tie and dye se Ganesh ji. So, this is just a small sample of uh, the beautiful work she does. So, Kanti ji, how much time do you think to make a sari? How much time do you think to make a sari? Look, the sari is a different design. The normal sari will be made, so we have a whole family, but it will take 15 days to make a sari. From the design, to the bone. Yes. And two months or six months, it will depend on the design. Yes. More power to you, I think. बहुत ही सुंदर काम कर रहे हैं आप थैंक यू जी जी मैं थैंक यू ये गन ये जो गणेश जी बनाए आपने इनको कितनी देर लगी बनाने में इन इनको कितनी देर लगी बनाने छः महीने लगे छः महीने छः महीने लुक एट दैट इतना टाइम क्यों लगा ये टाइड आई करने के लिए पहले से डिजाइन के ऊपर हम लोग पहले ग्राफ ले ग 
तब भी जो जो टाई करना पड़ता है वो आप तो नहीं देखिए है देखने के आपको पता चलेगा पूरे टाइम लगता है मैम ये पूरा हैंड वर्क है कोई भी मशीन नहीं है <laughs> और सार के लिए ये है अच्छा आप में से चावला के लिए भी कुछ क्या है कृष्ण भगवान है कृष्ण भगवान नहीं है इनके लिए क्या है हां कृष्ण देखिए मैंने बोला था आपको कृष्ण भगवान देंगे ये देखिए ओ बहुत ही सुंदर इसको कितनी देर लगी ये सेम टाइम में जी हम लोग जो अवार्ड का पीस बनाए हैं एक साल लगे हैं अवार्ड के पीस जो बनाए थे मेरा हस्बैंड भी नेशनल अवार्ड ही संत कबीर अवार्ड है मैं तो कभी भी ये टाइडे मेरे नॉलेज में नहीं था लेकिन जब ससुराल आए थे हम लोग वहीं से सीखे हैं और वहीं से सीखकर हमारा इतना सपना नहीं था अवार्ड मिलने के लिए लेकिन आज सीख कर आर इतना रास्ता आया है हम लोग सत्रह सौ महिलाओं को भी ट्रेनिंग दे दिए हैं और आपके लिए आप मेरा बेटा आपका बहुत बड़ा फैन है सब हर बार बोलते हैं तो आपके बारे में बोलते हैं वेलकम है शुक्रिया एक बाई डेटा भी है आपको दे देंगे आई एम श्योर बोथ ऑफ यू विल गेट दैट फ्रेम थैंक यू uh the third awardee of the evening is pankaja sethi for discovering the forgotten fabric of odisha weaves may we have the video please pankaja sethi a textile designer artist and researcher pankaja Sethi has been working with Dalit and Adivasi women artisans for the last 15 years to revive and reinterpret traditional Odisha textiles. In 2020, the National Alliance of Women on International Women's Day awarded Pankaja for her outstanding work with handloom weavers in Bhubaneswar. She is a recipient of the Ministry of Culture fellowship. and in 2019 she exhibited a textile artwork titled the flaming womb at the fabric of being exhibition along with asian and african artists at the nairobi summit of the icpd supported by the unfpa pankaj i have to ask you are you wearing one of your own creations okay please do uh, tell us about it i work with weavers uh... of Orissa and uh, many adivasi women artisans i basically work on contemporary designs because our traditional designs are fabulous but there has to be space for new designs and new developments so i look at how contemporary we can create and how innovation we can create so this is a single ikat weave and we have tried to create a translucent texture with one of the master weavers wonderful thank you kiran ji would you like to ask us something you never wear sarees kiran ji you <laughs> Sorry no no patience for you. Ha I agree <laughs> something that you and I have in common. Great thank you so much Pankaja. Uh now uh the fourth award of the evening to Dr. Rosalind Patasani Mishra for her steadfast focus on women empowerment. May we have the video please? Celebrated as the Iron Lady by TIS, Dr. Rosalind Patasani Mishra is the founder and president of Parichai Foundation, a pan-India non-profit organization recognized and felicitated by the President of India and the United Nations for the promotion of Indian art and culture and furthering women's rights. Rosalind's foundation has empowered more than 50,000 women. through fundraising concepts with the help of sponsors donations and more recently csr support rosalyn is also the ambassador of the women's entrepreneurship day organization we do in india currently she is an advisor to 100 plus active non-profit organizations all across the world so rosalyn i want to know why you call the iron lady Good evening Jay Jagannath uh, first of all coming from a political family i was never allowed to work in the slum areas i just felt like being the change maker of the society i kept on working very hard to empower women especially those ladies 
they wanted to be something in their life and they were not allowed my father told me one thing if you want to be anything in your life just create your path do not use my name so like the success came after 20 years you know if i'm here today it's not like overnight right. i became the advisor for more than 100 organizations and it's not so easy it's about the success career which i had started at a very tender age you know the, those days ladies used to think about becoming the doctor engineer like many lines and especially ma'am is here the madam sir of the country you know you we all look forward to become something in our own way but nothing was easy now things are really really getting changed more ladies will come forward become something we are not getting the success for ourselves we are the example for the society for those girls who are so innocent and they have not seen the power of a woman they can see through us so Devi is one not only one Devi many many Devis are here and I'm so so glad to stand next to the great Devi here my mother is here who is the greatest Devi for me <laughs> My husband is here, who is the strength, not only the strength, there is a common dialogue for all of us that before success of every man, there's a woman, right? But I, I can only say, if I am successful today, there is a man behind me who really trusts me, believe me, and allow me to just move ahead and to carry forward a strong legacy, not only through politics. There is a long way to go. Politics is not everything. I wanted to show the power of every woman through my work. I work hard to reach here. I'm so glad to Paramatma, Mahaprabhu, another Mr. Prabhuji. Thank you, <laughs> sir. Two Prabhus are great for me. I'm here. And ma'am, once again, I don't know whether you can recall me or not. 20 years back, I had approached your organization for the collaboration. And you told me that you'll come for Pariche one in Delhi event. I missed you. Today, it's a great honor here, ma'am. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for being Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I forgot. You were the first Madam Sir of the country, really. Uh, the fifth award of the evening goes to Ramita Singh for building on the legacy of Sabai Grass Products. May we have the video on her, please? Ramita Singh is a member of Maulu Chand Artisan Producer Organization, Nangal Kata Mayurbhanj. Ramita managed to rise above the ranks and became the secretary of the Maulu Chand Artisan Producer Organization, where she led 200 women artisans and helped sustainable sabai craft making training programs. With her entrepreneurial and leadership skills, Ramita was also conferred the titles of Master Trainer of the District and Master Craftsperson by the Government of India, SCSTRTI, Government of Odisha and DC Handicrafts. Ramita, do you want to Mana Ramita Singh. Yes, tell me. Mana Ramita Singh, I am a product of Sabai. I am a Sabai product. 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 Thank you. Shukriya. The sixth award of the evening goes to Sushmita Bhakti for her extraordinary work in Odisha schools. May we have the video on her, please? A renowned novelist and short story writer in Odia, Susmita Bhakchi is known for exploring human relationships in an urban, middle-class context with her writing prowess. One of her most celebrated books, Deva Shishu, based on the lives of children with cerebral palsy, was translated into English as Children of a Better God by Penguin. Her work has also been published by Bharati Anyanpeet in Hindi. 
Susmita, who does not take a salary for her full-time job, currently serves the government of Odisha as the chairperson of the Mole School Abhiyan. Using the platform, she has managed to revamp the educational ecosystem of the state and has transformed the academic dreams of children all across Odisha. Uh, just in case you're confused, uh, that's Manita Panda who's accepting the award on her behalf. That's her sister-in-law. We have a short video from Sushmita, which we will play in just a second. Could we have a video? I'm truly delighted to be chosen as the recipient of the Devi Award. I express my gratitude to the jury. This award is dedicated to the vision of our Honorable Chief Minister Sri Navin Patnaik and the tremendous hard work all my colleagues at Mo School have put in. This honor bestowed on me is a recognition of the continued success of the great initiative Mo School of Yan. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you so much, Manita, for Namaskar. receiving the award on her behalf. Great. Uh, before we go on to the next award, thank you. Before we go on to the next award, may we request uh, Siba Mohanty, the resident editor of the New Indian Express, to come to the stage and help us giving away the awards. Siba, are you in the hall? Anyway, I'm sure he'll be here in a minute. Uh, the seventh award of the evening goes to Lipika Singh Darai for telling stories that need to be told. May we have the video on her, please? Lipika Singh Darai. A film director and editor based in Odisha, Lipika Singh Darai studied filmmaking at the Film and Television Institute of India and became one of the first few practicing women filmmakers in the state. A recipient of four National Film Awards for direction, sound recording and film narration, Lipika's latest feature documentary, Backstage, produced by the Films Division of India, had its world premiere at the 39th Asolo Art Film Festival 2021 in Italy. On the other hand, her new film, Night and Fear, Rati Obhaya, a film essay, had its world premiere at the 52nd International Film Festival, Rotterdam, 2023. Wonderful. And Lipika, I believe you've just been given the BAFTA Breakthrough Award, uh, which makes your BAFTA Breakthrough baby. Tell us a little about this. <laughs> Don't call me BAFTA baby. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Okay, so uh, 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 this, is, uh, uh, this is what I'd heard, I'm sorry, but can you tell us about your new film? New film? Yeah. Uh, I have to remember because I am uh, in the middle of three films. Three films? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have been making documentaries and right. short films. You asked me about BAFTA. It yeah. is a breakthrough program by BAFTA. Right. So they select 10 people from India and... That's right, you know, yeah. yeah. So they highlight their work and they help uh, to navigate through the, you know, world cinema. Uh, so you're one of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. That's a tremendous honor, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Great. So wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, our next award of the evening, the eighth one, is to Dr. Gayatri Bala Panda for casting a spell with her words. May we have the video on her, please? Dr. Gayatri Bala Panda is one of the most eminent representatives of contemporary Odia literature. A poet, fiction writer, literary critic, essayist, academician and editor, she has authored 28 books out of which 20 books of poetry, 4 novels, 3 collections of short stories and 1 collection of essays were published by well-known publication houses across the country. Best known for her poetry, Dr. Panda was awarded the Kendra Sahitya Academy Puruskar in Odia for her poetry collection Dayanadi, 
River Daya in 2022 and the first Kendra Sahitya Academy Yuva Puraskar in Odia for her poetry collection Gaan, The Village in 2011. In 2012, she was named one of the 10 best young writers in the country by an English daily and was selected for the Writers in Residence program at the Rashtrapati Bhavan in 2015. She is the only Odia author to ever get this honour. Unfortunately, Dr. Panda can't be with us, so we'll send her the award. Uh, moving on to the ninth award of the evening, Dr. Mona Lisa Bal for creating an environment of joyful education. May we have the video on her, please? A prolific researcher, Dr. Mona Lisa Bal, as the chairperson of the KIIT International School, combines exceptional academic leadership qualities with research-based learning programs to create inclusive educational spaces. Under her leadership, KIIT International School offers students quality education and gives them the opportunity to transition to the mainstream learning with trained special education teachers. Mona was conferred with the Mahatma Gandhi Leadership Award by the NRI Welfare Society in the House of Commons, London. She was also bestowed the Visionary Leader of the Year 2022 title by the Centre of Education, Growth and Research for her contribution towards education, skill and research. Mona Lisa, can you tell us what inclusive uh, education means to you and how you practice it? The, Mr. Chavla is doing the honours, he's holding the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I extend my gratitude to Indian Express and the Devi Awards Committee. Thank you, Kaviri ji. Uh, well, I belong to a, an organisation which reflects inclusivity in a big way, KIT, KISS. And we started Send Globe uh, about 10 years back and it talks about disability, intellectual disability which is not seen actually. So we thought each and every child has some kind of aptitude ability. So the best way we can embed and we can include them by mainstreaming them. So our work started and we are here now at about 250 students and we are mainstreaming them. So it's lovely. <laughs> Wonderful. And I see a big contingent from uh, the school here as well. So congratulations. Sorry. Thank you so much. Thank you. The 10th award of the evening goes to Aboli Sunil Naravane for bringing girls back to school among many other uh, achievements. Aboli, can we have you on stage please? Uh, may we have the video on her? Aboli Sunil Naravane is currently the collector of Jharsaguda Odisha. She has an MBA and an MA in economics from Ferguson College, Pune. A Kathak dancer for more than 12 years, she has trained under Guru Pandita Shama Bhate. In 2015, she topped the UPSC CSE from the state of Maharashtra. Naravane's areas of interest are women's empowerment and adolescent welfare. She has worked towards bringing more girls into the school system, the prevention of child marriage, sanitary hygiene, empowerment and the mainstreaming of people with disabilities and beyond. So Aboli, you're from Maharashtra but you made Odisha your home. How does it, uh, how, how is the state treating you? Yeah, I'm from Maharashtra but uh, I've been from Odia Jio. Okay. I'm from Odisha. And my daughter, my Devi, she is almost, we call her home carder, will all, home state will always be Odisha. So we are very happy to be here. <laughs> Wonderful. And you are a big fan of Sachin Tendulkar, I believe. He retweeted something that you tweeted. Yeah. So what are the, th uh, tell, tell us a little about it. Uh, yeah, I have been a big admirer of him since uh, childhood. And when I cleared the UPSC exam, uh, and I topped the state from, uh, uh, topped the um, uh, exam from Maharashtra. He had sent me a letter oh. of congratulating me and, you know, for inspiring women to pursue their dreams. And the, so I keep wishing him uh, on his birthdays and if whatever we I, work we do, sometimes we tag him. So recently he had tweeted, uh, retweeted one of the tweets when oh. the Twitter was still Twitter. <laughs> yeah, when it was not X. Great. Thank you so much. 
Wonderful. The last award of the evening, but it's really not the least. The two sisters have been with us throughout the evening. Um, Rinalika and Akshita Bhanjdeo for restoring the 200-year-old Belgadia Palace and doing a lot more. May we have the video on them, please? Mrinalika and Akshita were born and brought up in Kolkata and attended the La Martiniere School for Girls. Both are directors of the 200-year-old Belgadia Palace in Mayurbhanj and are working to build sustainable tourism with social impact at its core in the tribal-dominated region. Mrinalika is also a successful yoga practitioner and facilitates wellness retreats in India and abroad, while Akshita is a TEDx speaker and is currently a manager at Dasra working to build a conversation around strategic philanthropy in India. Both sisters have been featured in numerous publications regarding their work in sustainability, arts and culture and the Belgadia Palace and Mayurbhanj Odisha were also featured in Time magazine's Greatest Places to Visit in 2023. Wonderful. It's not often that we have two princesses with us. I want you to tell us about the idea of sustainable tourism and why it's really the way forward for India. So when we started the Belgaria Palace uh, three years ago, uh, my vision was always to uh, drive impact. Um, also, of course, it had to make economic sense. And that's something that we kind of brought in through the idea of sustainable tourism or immersive travel. Where when someone comes to our palace and stays there in one of the rooms, they don't just take back, um, you know, they don't just come in and watch TV in their bedroom, but they okay. actually come in to interact with the local ecosystem. They come in to, um, you know, taste the regional food that we have to offer. And they also take back a part of Mayur Bhanj in terms of the handicrafts that we actually take them to a lot of these village clusters. So the idea of immersive travel or sustainable tourism is something that we really hold very close to uh, Belgaria's ethos and mission. And um, of course, also the idea of you know being uh, connoisseurs in the art and the conservation space because having a 250-year-old palace and then restoring it to somewhat its former glory has not been an easy task uh, but we always keep the conversation open and that's also some part of the sustainable angle that we actually look forward to how many rooms does your palace have uh, we have 12 rooms oh, okay but yes. uh, it must be much bigger than that there, are there are there places that you've not discovered as yet so actually the property that we call the belgaria palace was the uh, guest house of the royal family our main palace which is the mayur Bhansh palace uh, was donated by my ancestor to become a school. Oh. Uh, so it currently runs as an education school uh, and then the family in the 50s moved to the Belgaria Palace and what we've converted is actually the, their, um, it was originally a guest house which used to house a lot of foreign dignitaries and all these years later we finally decided to open it up once again. Wonderful. Uh, more power to you. Um, uh, uh, Ms. Bedi, before we uh, end, uh, is there something that you'd like to say, Akshita? Yes. Yeah, I sorry. want to make one small point on talking about sustainable tourism. I think coming from the legacy and the family we did, we were really inspired by the Devis in our family. And so, Bilgaria just became a vehicle for sustainable development. So, tourism was the channel by which we realized we could bring people to Mayurbhanj. And that's why, like about 15 years ago, Mayurbhanj was one of the poorest districts in India. Yeah. And from there to get to a point where people saw Mayurbhanj in Time Magazine's 100 Greatest Places in the World to Visit, and no doing of ours, it was just Belgaria being the platform to showcase Mayurbhanj Chau, to showcase Simlipal, to showcase uh, Sabai Grass. So the ideas for us was being the best platforms and intermediaries to be able to showcase the world what already existed. Um, so percentage of funds when you come and stay with us in Belgaria actually go into the Mayurbhanj Foundation, which supports sports for development, education, healthcare, um, and conservation. So I think that the one thing when you speak about sustainable development is doing good for the doing good is good for business. It's good for business. Yes, I know where I'm going to spend my next vacation. Miss <laughs> uh, Bedi, would you like to say a few words about all the women you've seen today and you know how it's impacted you? I expect this to happen now, <laughs> because this is the uh, this is where we move towards yeah. a more uh, dynamic womanhood. 
and with all these opportunities they are creating for themselves and using them. I think that's the new enterprising spirit which has come in the youngsters, young women of today. So this is not a surprise anymore, but I'm so glad that you're recognizing it and then you're giving them the visibility. Something which is lying hidden, but you are now putting it right on the front. I would just leave you with one, one thought which, which, which crosses my mind, that now it's also time for a Deva Award. <laughs> Deva Award. So what I think you could do, Prabhu, is probably t t do something interesting, is one Devi and one Deva Award. <laughs> so you make it a more equal society. See, now, Deva Award. So Deva Award. So you have a Devi Award and you have a Deva Award. Because it's time now we n get to know where are Devs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Devis are becoming more visible now. Absolutely. I think it's time we bring out the Devs. And there may be many sitting right here. Yeah, a wonderful thought. With that thought, uh, I'd like to request all the winners to come to the stage with their trophies for our final photo op of the day. Please do come to the stage and don't forget to bring your trophies. And that's a thought that we'll actually take quite seriously, Ms. Bedi. I think we know what we have to do next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, very much so. May I request Lakshmi Menon also to join us on stage and then she'll deliver the thank you address. But first, yeah. Nobody's as good as you on this. Social media is your, you're a star on social media. Mr. Chavla, you also come, no? Great. Thank you so much, everyone. May I now request Lakshmi Menon to come here and deliver the thank you address. But before that, I'd like to say thank you very much. You were a great audience. And thank you so much to all the Davies for coming here and to the Madam Sir especially. And uh, please do stay on for dinner. Very important announcement. As we come to the end of this edition of Devi Award, on behalf of the New Indian Express, I would like to sincerely thank our chief guest, Ms. Kiran Bedi, for so readily accepting to be here today. Ma'am, you've inspired many young women to believe in their limitless potential and follow their dreams. Thank you for sharing your life lessons with us today. And something that I'm going to remember is the fact that you said it's not despite the challenges that you became successful, but it is thanks to the challenges that you became successful. So next time there is a challenge we're faced with, this is something that I'm going to take home. Uh, 
a big thank you to all our devis, our superstars of the evening, because of whom we are gathered here today to celebrate their incredible journey and their fantastic body of work. I thank the Mayur Bunch Chow dancers for literally demonstrating to us that even a sword can nourish life and beauty when it is in the right hands. Our thanks to our sponsors, presenting sponsor Adani, associate sponsors MGM Green Energy, Vedanta, Ruchi, PGL Group, uh, Rungta Steel, IMFA, Indian Oil, PPA, and MCL. Thank you, th th thank you to our celebration partner Radico, our, our gifting partner Ahuja Sons, our hospitality partner Mayfair, our outdoor partner Ajanta, knowledge partner SOA, uh, deemed to be university. Last but most importantly, all our guests here who've gathered here today to cheer all our Davies. A big thank you to you and hope to see you soon next year. Radico Khaitan is one of India's oldest and most trusted liquor companies. Founded in 1943, the company has a rich heritage and a portfolio of iconic brands that have stood the test of time. With seven millionaire brands and a host of premium and luxury ones, our most celebrated brands include 8 p.m. Whiskey, Magic Moments Vodka, Morpheus Brandy, Rampur Indian Single Malt, Jaisalmer Indian Craft Gin, and Royal Ranthambore Whiskey. Radico Khaitan is known for its commitment to quality, innovation, and sustainability, and is now a Fortune India 500 company. While the prestigious Rampur Distillery is Radico's pride, expansion efforts have increased the output from 160 million litres to 327 million litres by introducing a new facility at Sitapur. This makes us the largest producer of spirits in the country. Radico Khaitan is the biggest supplier of branded spirits to the Indian Defence Services and is also a leading exporter of alcohol from India. In addition to its domestic market, the company exports its products to over 100 countries worldwide. As a business, we strive not only for the success of our brands, but for the betterment of our society at large. As a socially driven company, our efforts towards protecting and preserving environment educating children and uplifting the underprivileged have been monumental in changing the lives of many. While we aim towards greater goals and higher targets, we are proud of the legacy and benchmark we have set in the industry. And as the company embarks on the journey of premiumization, Radico Khaitan is the company to watch out for now and in the years to come. can't let you go away so quickly. We have to ask you to give a memento to Kiran Bedi ji. And then there's a special request from uh, our Odia Bureau. Uh, they want a picture of themselves with Kiran Bedi ji. So we'll have to ask her to stay on for just another minute. Yeah, uh, can we have the ladies who had requested a special photo op? Come, 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 quickly, quickly. Yeah, come. Seema, come. 